Hey Facebook friends, this is Jennifer. I'm hoping maybe I'm hitting some of you over the lunch hour today. Happy Monday. I am sitting here bundled up like it's um, <laughs> the middle of January. It's freezing in Kansas City. I'm literally even drinking coffee um, from a Christmas bug because I'm an adult and I can do these things. And um, was sitting here thinking about some of the coaching calls I've had real recently with women who have brand new ideas for starting a creative business and they just don't know where to start. And I have some tips that I wanna help you guys with. So as you come on, if you'd say hello, then I'll know that Facebook is working the way that it should. Hi, Amy. All right, if, if nobody else, we have, we have you here, Amy. Thank you. God bless you. All right, we've got people here. So, oh, Stephanie says it's cold in Texas today, too. It is ridiculous. Like, and I'm being a total baby about it, and I'm all, like, wrapped up in some vesty thing and drinking coffee like a baby. But here we go. We're going to talk about the first three things you need to do if you have an idea for a creative business, okay? For those of you um, who don't know me, my name is Jennifer Allwood, and I teach women how to create a beautiful home and how to build a creative business. And so I coach women every month and I get a lot of women who um, you know, are asking for coaching who have a brand new idea and they don't know what to do with it. And you're the girl I'm talking to. So the girl who um, is making jewelry but doesn't know where to start with turning that into a business. The girl whose neighbor and sister-in-law keep asking you to paint everything but you don't know how to turn it into a business. Um, what else? I wrote down notes here so I'll stay... Um, so I'll stay on track. Ooh, like uh, the people that are asking you to decorate cakes for every birthday party, but you don't know how to monetize that and you don't know how to take it from it's a hobby to it's a business. I have the top three things for you. And for those of you who maybe this doesn't apply to, maybe you have a super talented sister-in-law that you could forward this to. Hi, Joan. Hi, Joan Wood. Um, or maybe you have a neighbor who you've been telling for a long time, girl, you need to turn that into a business, so share this to her if you would, okay? Because these are practical tips that most creative people freak out on. All right, us creative people, if you're a creative person, will you, will you comment below, I'm not artistic by the way, I'm creative. And if somebody will comment if they're creative too, that'll make me feel like I'm in exactly the right spot. And um, hi from Chicago. I love Chicago. We're taking our kids to Chicago hopefully sometime this year. And so, um, and so yeah, if you're creative, okay, you are. You are fantastic. Thank you. I'm glad that you're here. All right, so um, this is what happens. A lot of women will get this idea that, okay, I think I have an idea that I could maybe turn into a business, but they can't really see how they can, how they can move from where they're currently at to perhaps doing it full time. I was there, okay, I was there 17 years ago. Most of you who know my story know that I have a degree in computer information systems. Not only do I have a degree, but I graduated like top of my class in computer information systems. And so I had um, a job doing software development that I absolutely hated, but got paid really well to do. And um, I didn't get my degree until I was 30. I was 30 years old, I went back to college in my mid 20s, and I can remember sitting in um, my advisor's office and she was like, Jennifer, you have to, you have to pick a degree. Like it's time, baby. <laughs> you got to pick something. And I'm like, all right, fine. And she said, well, what are you interested in? And I said, I'm either interested in design or computers. And she's like, okay, girlfriend, those are, those are two totally different things. And I'm like, I know. I can even picture the sweet woman's face. And it was, you know, 17 years ago. I'm like, I know they're totally different things. I said, but I just don't feel like I can make any money with a design degree. So let's go computers. And um, she didn't know any better, and so she said, okay, let's go computers. And so got a computer degree that I hated every minute of, but felt like it was the only way that I could make a full-time income. Hi, Lisa. And, um, and so, you know, that degree has not been for nothing. I do use some software development skills when I have to do a blog post like I was doing this morning and had to do, you know, a fraction of an ounce of coding, which I hate. But, you know, it's so it's not for nothing. But I made the huge mistake of thinking I could not turn this into a full-time gig 17 years ago. I wish I knew then what I know now. And I feel like it's my responsibility, hey, thank you, Caitlin, to help those of you who are in a similar position so that you can take some shortcuts so that you don't feel like you have to get a degree in design, because I didn't need that either, so you don't feel like you have to do all these extra things. If you're trying to go from hobby to business, there's just a couple of things you have to do initially, okay? We're gonna go over those. So if you got a pen and a paper, because note takers are history makers, that's what I tell all the girls in my coaching class, write these down, okay? 
Very first thing you have to do, I've got notifications popping up, sorry. If you have an idea for a business, if everybody's telling you have a business, the very first thing you have to do is name it, okay? And the reason you have to name it is because it's like when you're pregnant, um, and you know how when you're pregnant and you're not sure if it's a girl or a boy, and um, how many of you found out if it was a girl or a boy? We got surprised on baby number one. We didn't want to know. Baby number two and three, we found out. But when you go in and you find out if the baby is a girl or a boy, then all of a sudden you start referring to the baby with a name. Am I right? And, and so when you start referring to the baby as a name instead of just the baby, then all of a sudden it's more real. When we started referring to Easton as Easton and not just, I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl, like I'm just not sure. There's this whole wavering thing. And when you're in the like this wavering thing, nothing just seems quite as real as when you name it, okay? Same thing with the business. Think of a business like a baby, okay? And so it's really hard to feel like what you're doing is actually legit when you're just kind of, you know, wavering around on what the thing is and what the thing's called, okay? So here's how we um, put that into practice. If you are a jewelry maker, then you need to actually name your business, all right? And so what that looks like is the next time you're talking to, you know, your neighbor or your sister or whatever, and they're saying, girl, you should start selling those, then you can say, oh, honey, I am. I am. I've started my business, and it's called da-da-da-da-da. You have to meet me, says Jennifer Lee. Jennifer Lee, do you know that's my name, Jennifer Lee? <laughs> that's awesome my middle name's Lee not my last name obviously um, I'm, I'm telling you I'm so cold I have to drink coffee and so once you name the business it takes it from fiddling around to all of a sudden it's something like legitimate and when we actually um, do the things that we need to in our life to make things feel legitimate and a priority, we end up putting all this other attention and emphasis on it, and then they can take the right place in our life because we're putting the proper emphasis on it. Does that make sense? Some of you, um, the reason your business hasn't taken off is because you're really just not treating it like a business, so you need to name it first of all. And then, you know, after you get it named, go meet with an accountant, get it like legit, because when you when you actually like go to an accountant and do the proper things with the state and get a tax ID number, all of a sudden you sit up a little straighter when you're talking about your business because it's not just something you're toying with, it's something you're actually like making a priority and you're doing first things first, biblically, you're putting things in line, you're giving Caesar what Caesars do, and 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 all the stuff starts lighting up, lining up for legitimate businesses, okay? Businessness, say that 10 times, businesses. So number one is you're gonna name it, like it's a baby, all right? Um, one of the suggestions I have for you if you're naming your business is, if I wanna go back to the earrings lady, Let's say you love earrings and you want to do an, an earrings business, and God bless you, that's awesome. I, I love earrings. I love my nickel and suede. But what if you don't like doing the earrings five or ten years from now? What if nobody's doing all these farmhouse things anymore? What if nobody's making signs anymore? I mean, Joanna Gaines' whole line of everything. Let's look at Joe as our model, okay? It's all very farmhousey, but she hasn't pigeonholed herself into a farmhouse style because the word farmhouse is nowhere in there. So just keep in mind that it would be better instead of saying earrings to say creations, to say jewelry as a whole, to say designs, to say something like that. Does that make sense? I coach a whole lot of women who are sign makers and I'm, I'm always instructing them, make sure that you don't you know stick yourself so where you can only make signs I know right now you love signs and right now signs are really hot but what are you gonna do in five or ten years when that has transitioned out of what is super pop Pinterest popular you know what I'm saying because Pinterest is dictating a lot of what's happening um, in the decorating and design world so just be careful with the name but name it name it okay Next, I'm reading the comment about somebody's 14-month-old dumped goldfish everywhere. Bless you, mama. I remember those days. I remember those days. Number two, you need some marketing materials, okay? So years ago, 10 years ago, marketing materials looked like a business card. You don't need that today. Tell me when the last time you got a business card is it, and what did you do with it? Jerked it. I mean, shh, don't tell. Don't tell anyone, but the last time I got a business card, it ends up in the circular file. 
which is Mr. Magic's name for the trash. Okay. And so, um, so you don't need business cards anymore. Today's marketing is online marketing. All right. And here's what I've told the girls in my coaching class as well. You don't have to be the best sign maker. You don't need to be the best painter. You don't need to be the most talented jewelry maker. You don't need to be any of those. If you can market your business, the fact that you're not the best in your, um, you know, specific whatever, it doesn't matter because marketing trumps talent when it comes to getting your business name out there. Um, there are so many super incredibly talented people I know that because they are not good at doing things online, like the world doesn't really know about them. Oh, Samantha, thank you. Samantha Cannon from Cannon Creatives on here. She's one of the girls in my coaching class. And she just commented that my coaching changed her business in life. Thank you. Mwah. You're so talented and I can't wait to see what happens to you and your hubby. And so just know that today's marketing is not putting stuff in magazines. It's not sending out mailers in the mail. I mean, um, when's the last time you went to your mailbox and you got your stack of mail a week later than what you should have, like me, and the only reason you did it is because you know your mail lady watches your Facebook lives and you know that at some point she's going to say, Jennifer, your mailbox is full <laughs> because I know she's going to. So once a week I try to go down and get our mail and I come up with a stack of stuff and I'm like, oh, this looks interesting, this looks interesting, you know, magazine, bill, magazine, bill, junk, junk, junk. Do you guys ever actually look at the junk, junk, junk? Very rarely does anybody look at the junk, junk, junk. What does everybody look at? Their cell phone. I can't, I can't hold my cell phone and show you I'm looking at a cell phone because the cell phone I'm talking to. They look at their cell phone. Let's pretend my blush is a cell phone, okay? For those of you who don't know, this is the best, absolutely the best bronzer in the world, which yes, I just applied. It's called Beachfront Bronzer, sunset color. So this is my pretend cell phone, okay? This is what we're looking at every day. It's not our, it's not our mail. All right. It's not our mail. And so don't be spending your dollars on putting stuff in magazines. How, when's the last time you actually saw an ad in a magazine that you picked up your phone and called about it? No, but how many of you have been on your cell phone recently and you saw something that interested you and you either entered your PayPal address to have them bill you or you private messaged the company and said, can I get that in a medium? Um, or, you know, we're doing live on our phones. Marketing is now on your phones. It's on the PC. It's not showing up in your mailbox. So once you have your business named, now you need to market it. And the first thing that you have to do is get a Facebook page. It is the easiest thing on the planet to do. And for some reason, it is the hardest thing for a lot of creative people to do. I'm going to tell you why it's hard because it's hard, it's, okay, so sometimes I can get women to go through the naming it stage, and then when they have to start a Facebook page, they're like <sighs> The reason we instinctively go <sighs> is the same reason we don't go online when we you know, get ready to go on a diet. Because what if I fail? Because what if I make a complete butt of myself? This is why five, six years ago when I decided to do my first triathlon for my 40th birthday, I put it online immediately because there is a sense of um, responsibility that happens once you've put out to the world what your intentions are. So when you get a Facebook page dedicated to your business, suddenly there's an added sense of responsibility. It feels like, another layer of legitness. Okay. You named it. That was legitness one. You, you went and talked to an accountant that's legitness. And now you're telling the world with like a Facebook page or something you are actually elevating in your own mind and everybody else's the fact that I'm no longer toying with this. Like I'm actually going to try to make an income out of this. Carly, you know what? I, any advice on a great business name? When I named my business The Magic Brush, I hated it 17 years ago and I hate it now. Can I just be us, just, uh, just authentic and just tell you that? Um, but I had went through a list of words and names and the original name I wanted for my business was Chateau de Faux, which means the house of faux in French. I took two years of French in high school, uh, si vous parlez français, and so thought that I was being, you know, um, cute with the business name. Thank God, Mr. Magic said, I mean, literally, thank God. Mr. Magic was like, honey, nobody can spell that. Nobody can pronounce that. So in terms of a business name, make sure somebody can pronounce it and somebody can spell it. All right. And so if you can't write it out on paper, um, 
without somebody, or if you can't give the name to somebody else to write down on paper without them saying, now how do I spell that? Then that's the wrong business name. You don't want people having to like figure out how to spell stuff. Think of Nike, think of Coca-Cola, think of Adidas. I mean, think of Hobby Lobby, everything rolls easy. And so if you've got some cute little thing where you have to do an apostrophe slash hyphen something, mm -mm, you're missing it. You're gonna miss it, okay? So even though the magic brush is still not my favorite, it's easy. Most people can spell magic. <laughs> amazing to me. Some people can't, but it's okay. God bless it. We all have our talents. And so, you know, make sure the name is easy would be my best advice to you and make sure it's something that will grow with you so that in five years, you're not saying, well, that was dumb and you're wanting to change it because when you actually set up things legit from the beginning, changing it is not so easy. Tanya, God bless you. I'm so glad I keep you motivated. Thank you. Oh, Valerie, I'm so glad you think that's good advice. Thanks. If you have a business name that you're toying with, put it here in the comments. I've got enough of the girls that I coach on here right now. They'll tell you whether or not I'd give it a thumbs up. They'll give you their opinion. So go ahead and put a name in here if you're thinking about it for your business. So the marketing material of today, this was number two, is online. You have to get something online. You don't need business cards anymore. What you do need is an online presence. Business cards, you can only get to the amount of people you see in person. An online presence, you can get to the whole world. Okay, the whole planet is changing to online. And for those of you that are really like, oh, I don't like it, I don't like it. Well, then maybe business owning is not for you. I mean, that sounds really harsh, but it's the honest to goodness truth. And you know, business ownership is not for everybody. I hate doing taxes, but it's part of owning a business. So for those of you who hate social media, it's part of owning a business. Most of you probably have kids, grandkids, neighbors, nieces, and nephews who are super slick. Remember my little pretend cell phone? Uh, you know, Instagram, um, Snapchat, we call it Instaface and Twittergram at our house. And so you can absolutely ask them for some help. And there are there is no reason anymore if you know my 75 year old aunt barb can be all over facebook and commenting on my stuff so can you if my mom can run um you know facebook groups so can you and so is it out of your comfort zone perhaps but how bad do you want a business really i mean honestly because let me tell you the honest to goodness truth there's a lot of people online telling you about all the amazing benefits and you know the fact that owning their business is peachy 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 owning your business is hard stinking work my friends and there will be a lot of days you're in the fetal position sucking your thumb wondering if you should have kept your old job after 17 years I still have days where I think this is so hard and and what I tell the girls I coach on a consistent basis is if it wasn't hard if it was easy everybody would do it not everybody's cut out for this not everybody's cut out for being a business owner. Some people really need to go to work from eight to five. They really need to have a 401k. They really need somebody to instruct them on how to do their business. And then there's a breed of us, and this is me, that I, I, I would die there, friends. I'm serious. Like I would have just withered away in a cubicle if I had to do it like one more day. If you know how to play on Facebook, you can make a business page. It ain't that hard. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Lucy, for sharing my video. I appreciate it so much. For those of you who are thinking about starting a business, share this quick. Just share it to like your whole page or whatever, or not your page, but you know, your profile. That way you can go back and listen to this later, okay? Thank you, Haley. I love you too. Don't even know you, but I like your name. Number three, the number three thing you need to do. So you need to name your business. You need to start your marketing, which means online, online, online. Number three. You need to actually use the online thing that you set up. So let's say you are a 20 or 30 something and you kick butt at taking pictures. Your online presence needs to be on Instagram if you're in a creative business or anywhere actually. I mean, if you're a, a foodie, if you're good at pictures, period, get on Instagram. It doesn't necessarily have to be Facebook, but Facebook has more, um, Facebook has more social media followings than like the first three combined or something. So I feel like it should be Facebook, but go ahead and do a bunch on Instagram. All right. Um, for those of you who are just playing on Pinterest every night, 
Start a Pinterest account for your business. People ask me all the time, I already set one up for me personally. Do I need to redo a new one? No, you change your name. Change your Pinterest name to match your new Facebook page name. Quit using Facebook, your personal stuff, for business because if Facebook finds out, they can turn off your personal page. Did you know that? I know a woman that that happened to. She was selling vitamins and her personal page was shut down. So don't do that. Don't think that you're just going to sell everything off your personal page. By the way, your friends and family don't want to see it anyway. They don't. They don't. My friends and family don't want to see all my business posts. Your friends and family don't want to see all of your earring posts. They love you, but um, you know they're going to Facebook for news. They're going for pictures of your kids. They're going for um, humor, comedy, encouragement, but they're not going there to see all the stuff that you're selling. So do it on your business page. They can follow you there. So number three, set or whatever you've set up for your social media, now you actually have to use it. Okay, <clears throat> here's what I have. I have women in my coaching group who, okay, Jen, I've got the business name and I've set up my Facebook page and then crickets, like seriously, crickets crickets. And when I look, I'm like, well, why haven't you been using it? Well, Facebook doesn't show my stuff. Okay, that's not true. That's not true. Don't believe that garbage that Facebook doesn't show your stuff. They, of course, show it only to a, um, a portion of your following because of the algorithms, which basically try to help Facebook figure out, okay, this person's commented on Jen's stuff a whole bunch. So I'm going to go ahead and show Jen's stuff to them. So for those of you on this live video who haven't seen my stuff in a while, it's because you haven't liked, commented, or shared on any of my Facebook posts for a while. So Facebook, when you don't comment, like, and share on things for a while, they just, they just don't, they just quit showing it to as many people. So, and Nancy, that's not true either necessarily. Yes, you can pay to promote your page, but I know a ton of people. I grew my page to 5,000 followers before I ever started paying, ever. 5,000 followers. And, and the key was, number one, I was super consistent. I've had my Facebook page I don't know, seven or eight years. And I know for five years, you guys can go back five years and look on my page. I have never missed a day posting on Facebook, never. If I'm out of town on vacation with my family, I'm scheduling Facebook posts. I have never missed a day. Consistency is one of the keys to getting Facebook to show your stuff. They can tell, not because they're sitting there watching, but with their algorithms, if you really are serious about your Facebook page or not. If you're, you know, just dinking around with it and posting once here and then four days later once and then it goes two weeks. I mean, that doesn't show that you are consistent um, and being very serious about your online presence either. And so once you put together, you know, your Facebook page or your Instagram or whatever, it's not field of dreams. This isn't, you know, build it and they will come. They don't come. They don't come, friends. You have to go to them. You have to be putting stuff out into the world Oh, Lisa, I'm so glad. You have to be putting stuff out to the world on a consistent basis. That's a value to them. That's a value to them. Debbie says, I can't share your Instagram posts on your Facebook business page. Debbie, you don't want to. Listen, Debbie, okay, write this down. Just Debbie and I are talking right now. Everybody else, pretend you don't hear this because you're not gonna like what I'm about to say. Um, this is what I tell the girls in my coaching class, Debbie. You have to treat Facebook like a jealous boyfriend, okay? Think of a jealous boyfriend that you knew in high school. Maybe not one of your boyfriends, maybe your best friend's boyfriend. But the jealous boyfriends don't like you playing around with other social medias. If you think of a Facebook as a boyfriend, he doesn't want you on any other social medias, doesn't want you sharing any of your attention, wants everybody to stay right on Facebook, okay? So when you're cross-posting, is that what it's even called? When you're posting on Facebook and Instagram both, when you're posting for people to go to YouTube on Facebook, that's a pretty good sound effect, really. I mean, seriously, my kids would be really proud of that. Um, when you're on Facebook, stay on Facebook. Give Facebook all your love, all of your attention. Give Facebook no reason to, you know, stop showing stuff. As little as you can, send people outside of Facebook. Does that make sense? Keep them in Facebook. This is why, okay, let me, let me give you a secret. Am I still talking to just Debbie? <laughs> hey, thank you, Kelly, for sharing my video. Okay, so let me give you a Facebook secret, all right? Now, I have nothing to base this off of, but I'm a smart girl, so let me tell you something. So, Periscope, who remembers Periscope? Wow, Periscope, kick 
kicking butt. Live video, live video, live video. Now what do we have on Facebook? We have Facebook Live, just like this. Okay, interesting. Now on Facebook, because we have Snapchat, Snapchat filters, pretty, you know, the, the gorgeous beauty face, the flowers in our hair, the ability to write on things. Now Facebook Live has exactly similar options to that as well. Okay, Craigslist. Craigslist in the DIY community, am I right? Who does Craigslist? Who goes to Craigslist and looks for a sofa, a mirrored buffet, um, a sign, a whatever else? Me, I go to Craigslist, okay? Well, now you don't have to leave Facebook because they have Facebook Marketplace, am I right? So, Facebook and all their geniusness is determined to keep you so that you don't have to leave Facebook. They want you just to be able to stay there and play there forever and always, amen. And so, <laughs> and the reason they want you to do this is because they don't want you leaving Facebook and going to Craigslist. They just want you to stay on Facebook. So play Facebook's game. Play their game. Be consistent. Don't think that just because you make a Facebook page that people are going to find it because they're not. You have to put out really valuable things that people will hopefully share. Oh, Debbie, I'm so glad. See, Debbie and I are just having our own little convo right here. You never knew any of this. No problem. Debbie, if you have a business, I would love to get you in my coaching group. Go look at it, themagicbrushinc.com, and then just search for Inner Circle. It's 47 bucks a month for three hours of this per month where I'm teaching you how to get your business from hobby to business. How did you get people to know or follow a Facebook Live post? Well, um, okay, so when you're on Facebook, most of you, Rebecca, when you were just on Facebook and you're just scrolling, oh, let me get my pretend phone, okay? So you're just scrolling through Facebook. Did you just get a little square down at the bottom that said Jennifer Allwood is live now? Click here to join. And so Facebook is now telling people when you're just going on Facebook, who's live at the moment? And you can um, you know, decide if you want to go watch it or not. Um, the reason I'm able to get, you know, sometimes over 2,000 people I've had on my live posts is because I've had, <laughs> Facebook's going to be mad at me. <laughs> I love Facebook. It's my baby. You know that. <laughs> and um, it's because I have, you know, a large following on Facebook. I have 265,000 people. And so, um, you know, only a fraction of that, of course, get on a live video. little tip for you, and by the way, friends, for any of you interested in Facebook Live, I'm doing a webinar next month. You'll be able to start signing up next week for that on the power of Facebook Live for your business and, um, and how to use it to get brands to work with you and how to use it to make revenue. And thank you, Danielle Rowe. Danielle is one of my circle sisters in my inner circle and she just put the comment right there where you can sign up. And so Facebook Live is the most powerful thing you can do on Facebook right now. One of the most powerful things. And there's Stacey Haynes, another one of my coaching girls in here. Thank you girls for being here. And so, um, so Facebook Live is powerful and you've got to learn how to use it as a smart business person, not just playing around. So PETA, best to stay with Facebook or Instagram. Of all my social medias, Instagram is my weakest, wink, weakest link. The problem with Instagram and I is that Instagram wants really professional, pretty pictures. And I want relationship. And Facebook is the best um, medium, the best social media for relationship. Ain't nobody making relationship over Twitter. Twittergram is what we call it in my house. Um, and so that's not relationship building. This is relationship building. I'm talking, I'm actually having a conversation with you guys. We have something coming up in the next few weeks where you're actually going to be able to call me on the telephone sitting right here and actually ask me questions on a Facebook live video. So watch for that. And that's relationship. Instagram, I think, is more about putting out pretty pictures. It's, a, um, it's almost like an online magazine, and I'm just not so good at online magazine type stuff. Yep, Stephanie, thank you. It is my, le my leakest wink, my weakest link. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Terry, I'm glad you've listened to my podcast. Yes, join the inner circle. This is what I don't understand. For $47 a month, if I can save you a decade of shortcuts, why would people not pay that? I don't understand. If I told you guys how much money I have spent in coaching on my business, you'd fall out. You'd fall out. But I knew that if I want to grow my business, I have to invest in my business. Of course it'll work, Michaela, for your Nerian business. Of course, I promise you. Thank you, Anna. Another one of my circle sisters is on here. And so there's just some things that you have to do to decide, I'm going to take my business from hobby to full business. Is it going to scare the crap out of you? Yes and amen. And again, I say not everybody is designed to have their own business. Some people, 
um, I think are very comfortable with just kind of playing and that's okay. God bless you. You don't, you don't have to take it to another step of legitness. But then there's other people who want to go to that next step. And when they look at, like, I just don't know where to start. I just don't know where to start. I just don't know where to start. And, and I've got a couple of tips for you. Okay, one, we eat an elephant one bite at a time. So you start with something that's manageable, a piece of the business that you can get and get underneath your feet and feel like, okay, stinking, I, I did that, I named it, I started my Facebook page. You could name your business today, start your Facebook page tomorrow and do your first post tomorrow also. You could totally have an online business going by the end of the day tomorrow, okay? And so I think one of the keys for a lot of us creative people, because we're visionaries, so here, here's a little snippet into a creative person's mind. I'm looking at my walls and I'm thinking, gosh, they would be so stinking cool. I could do some stripes on there. Like I can totally see how stripes would look. Oh, but I can also see how a glaze would look or maybe a little stencil. I can see it in my head, okay? And then when we transfer that seeingness to our business as a creative person, we want to see, well, where's this going to go? Like, I can't see the whole picture. I, I don't know where God's going with this. Um, you know, I'm talented at making earrings, but I want to see the whole thing, okay? Well, the truth is God can only give it to us in a little bit of chunks at a time. Because if God gave you the whole picture for your next 20, 30, 40, 80 years, you would fall out. You would fall out. It would be too much for you. Okay, if God had showed me 17 years ago that I was going to be, you know, talking on Facebook lives and speaking and writing a book and having a podcast, there is no way I would have believed it. And I would have probably hightailed it the other way because I was so freaked out. Okay, so God can't sometimes give you the entire vision for where you're headed. I know as creative people, we like to be able to imagine things in the same way that I can picture my walls. We want to picture our future. And, and so we get stuck right there. You know, but God also says to do not despise the small beginnings. He gives us little chunks of things. It also says in the Bible to be faithful in the little things. And if you can't be faithful in the beginning stages of your business, how's he going to give you the vision for the whole thing? And so don't be discouraged by not knowing where it's going to go. Girls, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know where this is going to go. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm winging this crap. And that's, I think, faith and obedience and being along for the ride and just doing the next right thing to make your hobby into a business. So good morning, says Linda. Is there a best time to post on Facebook? Yes. Okay, so a um, couple ideas. What is this inner circle, Kimberly? Um, Kimberly, go to the magicbrushinc.com and do a search for inner circle. I have 130 some women in there that I coach every month and um, you are all welcome to join. Um, I coach them for three hours a month like this on how to build their business. Um, so best time to, bo uh, to post on Facebook. I will tell you based on my Facebook insights and if you have a Facebook page, go look at your insights. But for me, um, any time before about 10 in the morning is eh, eh, eh. And it just is what it is. The reason, and if you think of the reason, it always makes sense. It's because the majority of my following are a lot of women. Sherry, God bless you. I'm so glad. I prayed right before I come on here. Lord, let this touch just one person today. And so I'm guessing that it's you. Thank you for that. Um, so the majority of my followers are a lot of young moms and a lot of women. And so they're getting their kids ready for school in the morning. They're not on social media until, you know, everybody's kind of out the door and they've gotten their morning coffee and can kind of sit down or what have you. So in addition to that, yes, you can, Crystal. I would love having somebody from South Africa in there. We have a girl from Ireland in my group and um, it's amazing. So um, after about noon, my Facebook insights go way up and they drop off about nine o'clock at night. So in the evenings, think of when you're on social media. You're probably on social media, you know, after your kids go to bed, during the lunch hour. That's why I tried to do this over the lunch hour so I could reach a bunch of you. Hi, Christine Savage. Honey, you're doing great. Just do the next right thing. And I love you too, friend. And I'm so proud of you. I saw your new business page up last week and I'm so proud of you. Holy yoga. Holy yoga is my friend, Christine. <clears throat> um, Saturdays are not good for me for Facebook because most of my audience, again, being moms, think of what you're doing on Saturdays. You're busting out clean in the house. You're running kids to soccer practices. You've got birthday parties. Um, you are usually going nonstop. And so Saturdays are not great for me either. But you have to look at your own insights. Depending on what you do, it, you might have a total different following. 
So what other questions can I answer for you guys? I want to be a blessing to you if, for those of you who are wanting to start your creative business. Kaylee, I'm glad I'm talking directly to you. That's always God when that happens and it's so much fun. <laughs> so thank you for that. I appreciate it. And thank you for those of you who shared this. I Sharing is caring. I love you so much for sharing it. And that um, just helps to get my message to other creative entrepreneurs who um, just really need somebody to kind of spur them along a little bit and show them show them the way. Um, Tracy, you don't know what your creative business is yet? Okay, so here's what I say about creative people, and I love you enough to tell you the truth. You gotta pick one thing. You gotta pick one thing. We creative people are the best people in the world at having 4,000 ideas, and the worst at taking one idea, pulling that stinker down, and actually executing it. Um, and so you have to just pick one and start there. And remember, you're not marrying that business idea. You're just going to start there and you can always change it. Somebody asked about a Facebook page or a Facebook group. Okay, here's my answer to that. Page every single day of the week. Your response is going to be, but they don't show it to everybody. Yeah, but when I'm working with brands like Hobby Lobby, when I'm working with brands like Nebraska Furniture Mart, when I'm working with brands like Pier One, do you think they care how many people I have in a group? They don't care about group, group, groups. Let me tell you something I told my inner circle girls this week. Um, I counted how many groups I'm a part of and it was like 130 some groups. There's this new, you can do a Facebook group app and it'll tell you how many groups you belong to. And I'm looking at that list. Oh, where's my fake, where's my fake telephone? And I'm thinking, I didn't put myself in that Lulu Row group. I'm not in that group. How am I in that group? I didn't ask to join that. It's because people are putting me in groups. Don't put people in groups. Nobody wants to be a part of your group. If they don't ask you, you don't put them there. It's disrespectful. And so every day of the week, start a business page that brands can see. Because here's the thing, you gotta think a little bit further than instant gratification. Think about it like your 401k, okay? So your 401k, well, you might not get a ton out of it today. It's kind of painful to do. You gotta figure out where to put all your different 401k money, but you know it's going to pay off in the future, okay? A Facebook business page, you might not get a lot of instant gratification out of it today. There are gonna be components of it that you have to learn that are gonna feel awkward. You're gonna feel frustrated probably at times, but it's the what will pay off in the future and not the groups. And not the groups. And not the groups. So, I didn't see a bunch of those comments. I'm so sorry. I'm slow reading. I think I need glasses also. And I'm fighting it. <laughs> so, I had an appointment to go get them and then I canceled it. <clears throat> All right, you sell on Etsy and you're working to up those sales. Okay, so here to the Etsy girl. Here's, here is the one thing I will say to my Etsy people on this Facebook Live. What you gonna do when Etsy changes the rules? Yes, it will, Lisa. I've had real estate people in there before. Um, what you gonna do when Etsy changes the rules? What if they change the percentage they're taking? What if they change the way that um, they want you to put things on Etsy? What if they shut down your Etsy account? How many of you followed the story, was it last year or the year before, when one of the largest Etsy sellers of all times accounts was shut down? What are you going to do then? The thing with social media, even though I love Facebook, adore it, you have to have something you're fully in control of because when you have a Facebook page, you are at the mercy of having to play by Facebook's rules, all right? So the only thing that's totally yours is your website. I have blogged, my friends, consistently every week for nine years, nine years, nine years, nine years, nine years, and had taken care of that as much as I have my Facebook page. Because if ever there's a time when Facebook goes sideways or Mark Zuckerberg, you know, decides to change the rules, which I can't imagine that he would, but um, you gotta have something that's all yours. And so for that reason, I'm not a huge fan of Etsy things. I'm okay here, I, I should, let me rephrase that. I'm fine with you doing Etsy, but do it on your website, your own thing as well. Hey Kristen, thank you. Oh, I'm losing my battery, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Terry, rebranding is such a tricky word. Like, what does that mean anyway? I am my own brand. I'm my own brand. So I don't feel like it's rebranding at all for me to go from talking 100% about paint to talking about 
lifestyle and prayer and business like it's because it's still me does that make sense so if you want to jump from being um, someone who bakes to someone who sews it's still under the creative umbrella I don't know that if it's that it's a total rebranding and I think we put way too much thought into rebranding type things like what's everybody gonna say what's everybody gonna think okay first of all they ain't thinking that much anyway about you and if they are and it, you know well, what do my competitors think well your competitors shouldn't be watching you that close because while they're watching every step you're doing they're missing out on their own business and what they could be doing in their own business so if anybody's watching you that close bummer for them bummer for them so bless you guys thank you Kristen Calhoun for sharing this video bless your heart your photography has been your own name and you're wondering if you're changed the name I love businesses that's your own name Terry that's why um, this page is now called uh, Jennifer Alwood. Candace send me an email Candace Potter on the best way to start a website I have some information I can give you and would love to do that <laughs> hi Leah I am speaking truth I'm trying all right bless you guys so um, I actually have got to go do a little bit of painting over at my mama's house today and so um, this is exactly what you need to hear today I'm so glad Sarah thank you we used to do a lot of the share to enter contest Kendra reread the rules on Facebook for contests I don't want to respond to that because Facebook changes their rules regularly I will tell you this I don't run any contests on Facebook I run contests through raffle copter which by the way I'm gonna be giving a sprayer away on my website in the next few weeks so if you do not already get my emails go run the magic brush ink.com it's a paint sprayer from home right they're giving away one on my page and so but we'll be running that through um, raffle copter and not through Facebook Leslie fear I'm glad you're here Patricia thanks for listening to my podcast got a new one coming out on Wednesday Sherry my website's the magic brush ink.com yeah Marcy send me an email to info at the magic brush ink.com and we'll hook you up with some information tell my assistant Vicki um, that she's amazing and I told you to email all right, bless you guys. I'm going to get out of here. I hope that this was helpful. And if it was, I appreciate you sharing so much. For those of you who asked about my coaching, it's at themagicbrushinc.com or just, just Google Jennifer Allwood and you'll find my website. And then look for Inner Circle. And it's $47 a month and it's so stinking worth it, okay? You've got a team of really powerful women in there ranging from ones that have just started their business to ones that are, you know, doing TV things and traveling around with their business whose husbands have been able to stay home and be working with their business full time. So it's a, it's a lot of, it's a huge, huge spread to where they're at. So don't be intimidated. Use wisdom. If you can get from point A to point B in your business four times as fast as doing it on your own, why would you, you pay $47 to do that? So, all right, Leslie. Oh, I can help you with that because I'm working um, with an editor and things right now, so I can totally help you with that. All right, I got to go. Dora, I'm going to go over to my mama's. All right, bless you guys. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.